Wonderful. Well, welcome tonight, you guys. I'm so excited about this topic. This is our Wellness Wednesday. We've been doing this for about a year and a half consistently every Wednesday, bringing to you a new topic. Um, I was asked to present this one and I didn't really know what I was going to do it on. We went to our conference and I run into Mona. I hadn't heard Mona's story before. I had heard Sharon's incredible fertility story. A few years back, we were standing in line together. And at this conference, I, I was just talking to Mona, complimenting her adorable little boy, because I also had a little son there. And of course, mom to mom asking questions, what is, you know, his name and everything. She blew me away with this story. And immediately I was like, okay, this is, this is what we're going to do the Wellness Wednesday on because um, fertility is such, um, I mean, you don't think about it until you're going through it or you know someone who's going through it. But fertility actually, infertility actually affects one in, in eight couples. 50% um, of infertility is actually secondary infertility where you get pregnant once like easy peasy and then never, ever, ever again. Like you just, you, you, your body just, isn't going to get pregnant. Um, there's so many diagnoses around it. There's so much mystery. There's a lot of heartache and grief and frustration. Um, so I wanted to, to definitely touch on this topic. So a little bit about myself. My name's Andrea Abert. I'm the mother of eight. I'm traveling around the country in an RV with my family. Um, I'm expecting our eighth right now. Um, but I, all, I actually went through secondary infertility myself. So I understand to a degree like the pain or the frustration or not being able to, to conceive a, a child and not understanding why your body isn't getting pregnant. So I have a son who was born right away, right after we got married. And then it took about three years for our next one. And I had some intervention like tubal flushing. And then, and then it took another three, almost three and a half years for our third son. So, and then the rest came later after we kind of figured everything out. But anyway, this subject is so, so, so powerful. I want to introduce Mona because um, she's a successful business owner, a wife, a mother of three, a grandmother of three, um, 22 years experience in, in healthcare experience. Her passion was is massage therapy and it led her to explore the benefits of activation. So she didn't start this looking for fertility. She was just a healthcare worker doing massage, saying this will be great to incorporate into my health and for my clients. Um, so it had surprising results for her, very surprising. So I'm going to have her share her story first. And then we have Sharon on the call and Sharon is going to share her incredible uh, story. And then we're going to kind of get into details from there. And I have a lot of questions for these ladies. So Mona, with that, could you please um, introduce yourself, kind of take it away and um, share with us your story, like what you went through, your diagnoses, um, just give it to us. I'd love, I can't wait to. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to this call. Um, this is something that um, I'm really passionate about and um, we might need a Kleenex. Y'all might want to have a Kleenex because um, I wear my heart on my sleeve and um, it's just something, you know, and I see so many, so many couples and, you know, and women to uh, just go through this alone. And it's something that we don't have to do alone because they're, there are others out there. And um, if, this, if this is where you are right now, I just want you to know that I'm praying for you and that I hope this gives you some hope. And um, yeah, um, so my name is Mona. I am 40 years old. Um, I have two, two children that are 23. Uh, we're a blended family, so they were from our first marriages. Um, my husband was also in infertility for 23 years. Um, both of our children um, are the same age. They're seven years old, or we, we met when they were seven. And um, we, we tried. We, we did all the things. I, I had been to doctors and different things. I was told I had um, endometriosis. I was told I was in early menopause when I was like 30. Um, I was put on different medications, which only caused more problems and they just kept getting worse. Um, I couldn't understand. And then I had other things happening with my gut as well. I didn't even understand that those two things were correlated either. And um, I heard about some activation stuff. My husband kept telling me and it's like, no, this is not for us. And I, then I learned, you know, well, this could help my clients. So I was, but I, I also needed to try activation for myself to see, to see, right. Um, and within, I don't know, about three months of being on uh, what we call the, uh, the vitality stack, 
um, cause that was what was out then um, um, with these activators. I, I produced a normal period. I hadn't had a normal period in 19 years. Take us back a little bit because you, you actually received a diagnosis, right? During I that did. Um, so after I had my daughter, um, I was diagnosed with uh, endometriosis. They told me I also had polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, which uh, they said I had a really large cyst on my left ovary. And when they went in, they actually removed a fallopian tube um, because it was, not a, a, it was not a cyst. And the doctor then told me that everything looked great. There's no reason why I shouldn't have a child and that I should be able to conceive. Um, it never happened. I was told I was overweight, you know, and the sugar was attacking my ovaries. So I needed to lose weight, which I did. They put me on uh, a, a medication called metformin, which did not do much for me. It didn't make me feel good. It didn't help with anything. And um, I, mindset was really hard for me too. I, I really internalized like, what did I do wrong? Why is this happening to me? You know, I tried to like, you know, to, to eat better, to get more active. And uh, especially later in life, when I was younger, I didn't really understand. And I just kept going, doing the yo-yo um, of going to the doctor and trying to find out things. And it never, nothing, you know, and it, they would give me this hope that something would happen and nothing, as soon as I would get off the birth control or whatever they were doing with me, whatever treatments they were doing with me, it would just go back to where I was, which was not ovulating, not having periods. And um, it was just a vicious cycle for, for 19 years. And so fast forward, you're introduced to this, this concept of activation. Mm -hmm. You're gonna test it out. You think it's gonna be something good to share with your patients, but you get on it. And then how long did it take you to actually get a period after you got three into months. this? Like, three months, okay, that's- Three months. It was three months and I was, you know, I told my husband, I was like, mm, uh, so this means that I'm, I'm ovulating, you know, this, right. And it, it came, it kept coming every month too. And it was normal. It wasn't, um, cause previous, my menstrual cycles would be very violent to where, you know, I am working in nursing. I would ask the nurses, like, is this normal? Should I be going to the hospital? Am I miss, you know, cause I, I thought it was miscarrying at times because of how, what was coming out of me. Wow. It, it was very, um, and some of the nurses was like, oh my gosh, you need to save that. They need to biopsy that. Like there's something going on with you. But it never turned out to be, they just said it was dead tissue. That's what I just kept getting told. Um, so within that first year, I, I, I had a period after that three months, every month that's continued to come even after having my son. Um, so it wasn't until I think it was when NAD came out, uh, which is another powerful activator that we have, right? And I had did a video with my friend, Melissa Brown, about how my female health and gut health have gotten better. And in that video, we jokingly talked about like, well, maybe this is the missing link. Maybe this is the missing link that, you know, my body needs to, you know, to, to, to make this a healthy, safe environment to conceive. And um, she was like, wouldn't that be a great story? <laughs> I was a year to that a year to the day of that video, I found out I was pregnant with my son. That's incredible. After 21 years of infertility. And I mean, the whole thing of telling me it would never happen. It would never happen for me again. And so I, I want to get into what you were taking and I and then I want to introduce Sharon's story because I think these are two women with incredible different activation stories, different timelines. And, and it just shows, goes to show that when you turn your body on at a cellular level and you're activating those pathways, healing doesn't look the exact same. It's not an Advil pack that you, you would take and it would say in 20 minutes, your headache should subside. It literally is your body going to work, healing itself at a cellular level. And each body knows what, what to address first, what, what issue it's like waking up your internal naturopathic doctor. That's what I, that's what I talk about. So Mona, when you were first introduced to this, we didn't have NAD, which is our, the third activator. But for those who are new to the call, um, activation is this concept of awakening natural healing systems that already exist in our body. So we're not supplementing. We're using very specific herbs and compounds to awaken these pathways, to switch them back on so the body can go to work doing what it does best, right? And the body knows what the root cause problems are. And so what Mona started on in first was the vitality stack, right, Mona? It was. So that's NRF2 is our, our flagship activator. And that's getting rid of the root cause of oxidative stress. 
in our body. And it's starting to recalibrate those genes, you know? And then she was on NRF1. NRF1 is the cell energy. Um, it builds up mitochondria in our body. And actually, um, I, I learned this as I was going through my recent pregnancies with activation is babies get their mitochondria 100% from their mother. So they don't inherit any mitochondria from dad. So if mom has no mitochondria or poor my mitochondria, we have nothing to give. So that's, that was what you were on. And then the third um, product that comes in that vitality stack is a probiotic. And you were dealing with gut, gut health, gut issues. There were so many layers to what was going on with you. And then the last was that, that powerful Omega. So I just want to bring Sharon, if you can unmute yourself and just share your story. I want to get into your story. And then I want to talk about these activators and a little bit about how it works diff differently in each one of us individually. Okay. Hey, thank you, Andrea. Thank you for having me on tonight. Um, wow. I didn't think I was going to get uh, emotional, but am I? Okay. So <laughs> um, this was a for me, and and my heart goes out to Mona um, and and, to, and everyone. I, I'm seeing the the chat. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in the chat too. So, um, my story is very different because I didn't. I wasn't diagnosed. I didn't. I didn't even know that. I guess I was infertile. In fact, I'm not even going to say I was. But um, we'll just put it this way. Um, after 23 years of not getting pregnant, and I. Well, I was married more times than I care to mention. Um, so, you know, I, I just knew though that I was going to have, I just knew God was going to give me my little girl one day and I was fine with that. I just, um, and actually I had adopted teenagers and raised them. And I just thought, well, you know, one day when I have my little, you know, I'll have my little biological child. And so I kind of didn't think about it. You know, I just knew it was going to happen. And then I got on the NRF2 activation for just general health reasons. I was pretty healthy and um, I was 44 and boom, I was pregnant within like three months. Um, and then after like literally, I think it was the same day that I found out I was pregnant. Um, <clears throat> I had... I, I think I had food poisoning or something. My intestines started kind of going crazy. Actually, everybody in the family did. We went to a party. Um, and then by Monday, I had to go to the hospital. And I was 10 weeks pregnant. And I, or, yeah, and I lost it, lost the baby. And so it was sort of like, okay. And then my doctor said, I went and talked with him, and he said, um, you know, you need to wait, wait a few months and all this. And I was like, nope, um, I'm just going to, you know, do what comes naturally. Um, and within 30 days, I was pregnant again. And um, so, of course, and I'm an attorney. So, <laughs> so I thought, you know, here, okay, I've got this baby and okay, I have to be, you know, so I started researching. What am, you know, because I was worried, uh, well, not worried. I wanted to know what am I putting in my body? Is anything and everything because I was eating very clean, very healthy. Um, what am I putting in my body? Is it safe? You know, is it safe for my child? So, um, I mean, I don't know if you want me to mention, but of course, like I have some research that I found just, I just searched pregnancy. I searched, um, you know, breastfeeding. I searched children. And then of course, oxidative stress and NRF2 activation. And then what I found was the glutathione. Tell was, us about that. Okay. So that's really pretty cool. So glutathione is one of the enzymes that the body produces. Um, actually, from what I've read and studied and researched, you really, we uh, don't really get any from our food. I mean, you get some from your food, but because it's typically destroyed in the digestive tract, you just don't absorb a whole lot. So typically your source is what your body makes. And because of our food sources being polluted and depleted, actually the nutrients depleted in the food sources, 
don't allow our bodies to produce the glutathione that we should make. And so then, um, you know, in, in all the research, it came out, well, guess what? Our, NR, our NRF2 activation actually causes the body to increase glutathione production by an average of 300%. And as maximum, it's been tested it's up to 390%. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. That's crazy. So what I found out though, is that the glutathione is basically, it's the master detoxifier of the body, but it is what is in the placenta to protect the baby. And that was just like, so cool. Um, and of course there's other, um, other things as far as it helping your body to digest better and all of that. So you are absorbing the other nutrients that you should have. So, I mean, and I, I have a few, can I just read a couple little quotes here? Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> so, and of course this is like, you know, I prepared, um, and this is just something I actually, it was so cool when you asked me, I mean, I already had this in my. I had already prepared this years ago, obviously, because she's my little one. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I turned 45 eight days after she was born. I mean, and I was pregnant at the same time as my oldest adoptive daughter, and she was 23, and I was running circles around her. I mean, literally, she would complain, oh, my feet swell, my this and that. I would say, honey, you have got to take this stuff. And I just, you know, she was just stubborn. She wouldn't do it. Um, and I, I had so much energy and I was happy and I was great. And I had a perfect pregnancy. In fact, I was a little bit insulted by the doctor because they sent me to a high risk doctor, right? Like, oh my gosh, you're over 40, you're pregnant for the first time. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? You know, this is it's supposed to happen. So um, I go in and the doctor goes, he walks in and says, wow, was this an accident? I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, so wait a minute, like back to the glutathione. So um, glutathione is the body's most powerful antioxidant. It's crucial for the development and protection of fetuses. Um, our, our body, I'm sorry, our primary source glutathione is from our own body producing it uh, because it's broken down and lost in the digestive tract when it's consumed. Also, our modern food sources are depleted. Okay, so here's a quote. Um, Overwhelming evidence indicates that glutathione, the body's master um, antioxidant, are crucial at all stages of pregnancy. From preconception to fetal growth and development to labor, and prenatal development. Um, they help to protect the fetuses from the damaging effects of pollutants, carcinogens, and teratogen, teratogens, and provide protection against the oxidative stress that is known to cause congenital malform mal malformations, abortions, and miscarriages. Uh, numerous studies have shown they're crucial in preventing oxidative stress in pregnant women with anthrax inflation, inflation, oh my goodness, sorry, it's been a long day, inflammation, and disease conditions like diabetes and preeclampsia or in fetuses at risk for developing cystic fibrosis. And then glutathione can decrease the incidence of birth defects and protect both mothers and fetuses from the damaging and possibly fatal consequences of pregnancy complications. Um, that was from Women's Health and Beauty. I mean, I've got, you know, a lot of citations here, but um, another one just says glutathione even protects the mother in developing fetus from the damaging effects. The free radicals minimizes the oxidative stress that occurs dur during labor. So this is interesting because we go from pre preconception, helping you to, you know, the fertility into pregnancy, how important it is, and even into labor um, and the birth process and then the placenta contains a significant amount of glutathione to filter the pollutants before they reach the baby. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's so important. You know, when you think about the things that we're exposed to, even if we try to protect ourselves while we're pregnant, um, the things that we're exposed to. Do you know what I, what I'd love to contrast here too, is, is just how different these stories are. And, um, Mona, you know, was introduced to these products 
and her body needed to heal a lot. So she was doing a full, a, a full year and then introduced NAD. And we're going to talk about these activators in just a minute. But um, and then it was a year on NAD. So can you think about how many people who don't understand the healing process of their body and they just want an overnight fix and they're like, oh, I took it for three, four months. It didn't work. So we really have to understand what's happening at a cellular level, what's going on. I like to say that it works in everybody 100% of the time because we know with the empirical data that we have, why that it's going to increase glutathione by 300%, that it's going to reduce oxidative stress by a very specific amount every single month. So um, I want to, to share with you a little bit when I was dealing with infertility, um, secondary infertility with my boys, um, I, I found, came across a book that I really is fascinating and it's called Making Babies. And I'm going to, um, the doctor is Dr. Sammy S. David. And he, it's fascinating too, because it, it opened my mind to understand that we are not our diagnosis. So this is a doctor who um, actually was part of pioneering IVF. And he actually said, you know, I had a moment when I was putting the egg and the sperm together in a Petri dish. He said, I am playing God. This is not for me. So he made a personal decision that it wasn't, he didn't want to do that. And he was like, it's not, it doesn't even have the success rate that we always think, you know, so many young people think, oh, I'll just go do IVF or I'll do that. And we think that they can miraculously put a baby in. It's actually a very frustrating process. You can go through five cycles. Um, you'll find that it's, it's damaging and it's very toxic to the body. And those are the very reasons why we're not getting pregnant in the first place. So we're really forcing a process onto the body. Um, and so what I loved about the book, Making Babies, is he partnered with Western medicine. So he really started to look at his patients. And sometimes it was the most simple thing while they, why they weren't getting pregnant and they were ready to go do IVF. And, and so the book really tells you to like, look at your stools and it, it gives you all these tools um, to help you balance your health, right? But at the same time, I didn't know what I didn't know, right? So activation is another layer of health. It's so much, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's so much more than what supplementation is because we are all living in a hijacked environment. And if we want to get our bodies to where they need to be to conceive, we need to turn on these activators inside of our body because they're a million times more effective. And that's empirical data. That's not me being like throwing out a number. They're a million times more effective than, um, than, you know, us trying to do it ourselves or trying to balance everything out ourselves. Our body knows how to do that. So Mona, if you can share a little bit, um, like I, I just, we were talking about the frustration or like that emotional toll. And you were saying that, you know, cause it, cause it is that you go through all these highs and lows. And can you talk to us a little bit about that and a little bit about maybe mindset? Absolutely. Um, um, I mean, for me, it was really, it was really hard to see, you know, everybody around me having babies and, um, how I should, you know, well, yeah, it, it, it just, it was really, I couldn't even walk down a baby aisle. I couldn't walk near a baby aisle. I couldn't, I mean, there were friendships that I walked away from because it was just too hard. It was so hard, so hard. And, um, we were, we were to a point where we were like, we're okay. Uh, my daughter was pregnant at the same time I was. <clears throat> same as Sharon. Um, my daughter kept telling mom, we should do this together. And I was like, no, we're traveling. We're having fun. I'm, I'm just ready to be a grandma. And like, I can give the baby back, right? And, um, but, I, I, but bef bef before that happened, my, 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 like, it was probably about five years ago. I finally just was like, okay, God, I can't, I can't hold this anymore it's literally killing me. It was killing me. It was suffocating me. I think most of my, um, most of my honeymoon, I slept. I slept the whole time because of how sad I was because God instilled in me to have children. That was like my biggest thing. And I couldn't understand why. And, um, my husband kept dragging me to serve at church with these little kids and I'd see him playing with them and it just it made it hurt even that much more because my first child I didn't have support I didn't have that I didn't have somebody who cared he cared and he wanted to be there for me and I just wanted that so bad and um 
we were at church one day and God was talking to me and I was like, all right, I'm going to give this to you, but can, can we, can we do this deal? Not that God makes deals, right? <laughs> I'm like, can we, can we do this deal? Can you like, can we just do this before I'm 40? Because, um, you know, I, I don't want to be that old mommy. <laughs> I was 39. Um, but when I, when that started to shift to like a lot of things, I started losing weight that I've been holding on to since I had my daughter, I've lost 65 pounds. Wow. in the last few years, like that was weight that I was holding on to and a lot had to deal with what I was dealing with. And just oh, Mona, hurt. can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. I didn't realize that our body, because it's so wise, it, it throws, it will, to protect our organs, it will throw the, the, the toxins in our fat cells mm -hmm. to protect the vital organs. And so a lot of times when we're holding on to weight that we can't lose, it's literally a it's how the body will sweep the, the toxins under the rug. And so you're losing that was probably also part of the, because I, I know so many people who start on that, that NRF2, NRF1 probiotic, and they will just lose weight because. My husband and I both did. We lost almost 200 and something pounds together in that first year of activation. He, he was activated as well? Yes. Yep. Prior to that, he had been tested too, and they said he had a low sperm count and that his chances of infertility were very low um, with his previous wife. And um, so, you know, we didn't know what it was, you know, I was tested for some things. He wasn't, he was tested years ago. So we just assumed that it was, that's kind of what was still going on. Um, during that time, my husband was 400 pounds. I was close to three and, um, it, it's been a journey. It, it really has. And, um, oh, no. and I, and a lot of that, um, just letting that go though. And just letting, just not letting it consume me because it did, it consumed me and it affected, you know, and, and there was a time to where my daughter was like, am I not good enough? Yeah. And that, like, that killed me. That just well, crushed me. That, that is with secondary infertility because it's actually so it's 50% of infertility cases are secondary infertility. And a, and a lot of these women get ignored because they'll say, you already have a baby. You should be fine. It's, uh, but it's funny. It's something that's just very ingrained in you the, 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 to, to have offspring, you know, or to have that desire um, to bring children into the world. And when you, you get pregnant once and then it just never happens again, it leaves you very, very confused. Mm -hmm. It does. Oh my goodness. So I want to talk about NAD just a little bit. Um, I, I love it. It says uh, it's, it's, it's like the CEO of our body and uh, these sirtuins, these powerful sirtuins in our body are like the CEO. They make all the calls and the NAD is, they said the money that pays the CEO. So nothing happens if the CEO doesn't get paid, right? He's not going to run this big corporation and not get paid. So we have to pay the CEO to, to run everything. And so the sirtuins, um, the, the, we call them seven powerful sirtuins, and it's like awakening the CEO of seven different departments. So picture you're, you're in Dillard's shopping store or something. You've got the shoe department and the, the maternity department and the women's department and the shoe department. Immediately when, the, when NAD is on, all those departments are ship shape in order. You know, everything is, is lined up and it is literally anti-aging, cell autophagy, your body, uh, it's the next layer of, of just cleansing and detoxing and purifying and rebuilding and rejuvenating the cells. Um, it's our third powerhouse. And that's what Mona was on um, after a year. And then it took a year of that to, before she conceived her, her child. And meanwhile, all this healing is happening in her body. So, it, you know, it's, it, it wasn't, you know, if, uh, uh, and you'll agree with me, Mona, because we love it. We were saying you're not your diagnosis. We the talk to that a little bit, Mona, because in today's society, we have we're diagnosed with something, right? And then we just kind of just accept it, really, you know. And like, okay, well, that's gonna. And I did. I accepted that, you know, the fact that I may never have another child, and because I lost a fallopian tube, my chances were even less. Um, and um, it just you know, it's, it's like putting a label on, on me, you know, I mean, but aside from being geriatric and pregnant too, like, you know, I get reminded of how old I am and some of those kinds of things. And I did find a study, um, that was done with NAD plus or NAD. Um, and, um, it was done with female older mice and it showed that it ramped up their reproduction. 
um, for older females. The younger females, you know, they didn't do anything with them, just the older ones, because they weren't produced to see if they would produce more. Um, so for older females, it is really, um, it really helps to, to, to bring that, that harmony back um, for them to create that safe environment. And I, I fully believe that, that that's really what kind of kicked my story into gear. You know, for fear of going over time, but I'm going to do it anyway, because I'll, I'll, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, we, we, we mentioned geriatric pregnancy, right? We're old ladies. You're now over 40, so you shouldn't be able to give birth. Like a lot, society just labels us. They put so much on us. Don't have a baby now. You're too young. Do your career. Okay, you can't have babies. You know, they, they throw birth control at you. They throw all these things at you that mess up with your system. You know, they throw stress at us. Um, we have a poor diet. We have so many things that are out of our control with EMFs, fuel emissions, like pesticides, herbicides out the wazoo, right? And then, and then you're supposed to get pregnant in this tiny window, and then you get pregnant in a certain age, and then you're an old lady. Um, and then you're, you're going to maybe die or break down while, while you're pregnant, right? So, and they give you all these statistics. But in India, it's quite common for women to have children in their 50s. Like it would, and the idea is, if you're pregnant, guess what? That means you're able to have a, like, then you should be able to have it. There is no law or rule. A healthy woman will carry a, a conceive and carry a child. So Sharon, let's talk about geriatric because you were 44 and you were 45 right after she was born. Um, so talk to me. You said your pregnancy was amazing. Running circles around your, your daughter, 23 year old, mm -hmm. 23 year old running circles around her. Um, your labor was great. You were sharing with me. And then tell us about like your nursing and tell us about um, what, what does an activated child look like? Okay. So yeah, this was just so exciting to just, as it went, it just seemed like I kept getting all these wonderful surprises, you know, just to see how it was just wonderful. So actually, you know, we're talking about glutathione. So in the research, I found out that Glutathione is also what is in the breast milk to help provide the child with its immunity. And so, and then of course, I go to all our, our conferences and conventions and Charlotte was never sick. Oh, I, I totally jumped the birth, but we'll, we'll go back to that, but in the breastfeeding, but just, so she was, you know, breastfeeding. I wanted to just do everything naturally. Um, she was never sick. And it literally her first time ever even having a fever was three and a half. And I did make the choice to go ahead and vaccinate her because we travel so much. And I thought, well, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, when we go out of the country and this and that. And um, I remember I actually video of her after her first vaccinations and it, because it didn't phase her at all. She didn't run a fever. She wasn't tired, anything, but yes, it actually helped with production the milk production. Um, and so I also was just, you know, in visiting with all the other ladies and reading the Facebook posts, everybody said higher birth weights, uh, better pregnancies, better deliveries than, you know, and then that was my first child, of course, but a lot of ladies that was, you know, their second, third or whatever child. Um, and they said that, that the delivery was better. The, um, yeah, and the breastfeeding, the birth weights, the health. And so I actually took, I thought, well, I'm going to, one time, I'm, I'm going to actually start asking people. So I was at one of the conferences, started asking people, you know, just go up to the other moms or dads with their babies. And I couldn't find, I found one baby who they said was actually, uh, had a little bit of a cold or something or some problem like that before age two. Nobody else had any problems. So, you know, when, when I, see other moms and it's like, oh, my baby's got this ear infection and this and that. And I just want to say, you know, hey, look, you know, um, but it's, it's really amazing. And, and in that article, I don't know if you picked up what I was reading, it did say postnatal development too. So it helps the baby. So I did natural uh, baby wet, baby led weaning just to be natural. And um, she was literally, you know, just weaning off we'd nurse some at night to put asleep um and and we nursed until she was five for almost five right and so you were I, almost 50 yeah 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, so literally, you know, I guess what her birthday was last Friday and my birthday is Sunday and she just turned nine. I'll be 54. Amazing. So, um, but I will say this too, in this whole conversation, um, a year and a half ago, almost or something like that, two years ago, I went through menopause and didn't even, you know, didn't even realize it. So just in the full spectrum of women's health and women's issues, I think being activated just carried me right through, you know, I mean, because I didn't have, I don't have any of the problems that you hear, hear about. Um, Do you know, I, I'm sure that people on this call just want to grab someone and ask a ton of questions. So what I want to say is get with the person who invited you to this call and they have, we have incredible Facebook groups with so many incredible firsthand testimonies, but not just the testimonies, but also the science of, of why. So I love to, to explain it. It's not like, oh, it just happened to help Mona, but I didn't do anything here. It's, it literally is working at a cellular level. So you get to see that. So get plugged into those groups, ask that person. Um, before we get off, Mona, I have two more things I just want to bring into this and hopefully we'll wrap it at 40 minutes. But um, what what's your kind of go-to when you're running across a woman who is struggling with infertility? Do you have something you recommend they start with? And what is your sort of approach to that? Um, so, you know, when I do run across somebody, usually what I ask them is how's their gut? Because your gut health has some significant impact. The two share a wall and they can affect each other, which I did not know that. And, um, when my gut health got better, so did that because I was also having some other issues, um, with my female organs. And, um, so depending on whether, you know, they have gut health stuff going on is whether or not I, you know, recommend a probiotic, you know, the probiotic. Um, but ultimately it's that, um, trisynergizer. Um, I, I believe, you know, the, those three together are just so powerful and, um, they're so powerful that yes, there's going to be a patent on them, right? Yes. A new, like a brand yes. new, because of what it's doing together. They looked and they said, this, this thing needs to be patented because of what it does together. Yes. Wow. So I would agree with you. I would get right on that. Um, that's incredible. And then let's, let's close it with mindset. You just said like you, you surrendered it to God. You were like, okay, I'm going to let this go and let God and just live your life and choose like joy and where you were in your life, mm -hmm. which was freeing. It was very freeing. It, um, you know, changing that mindset too. And I think it, you know, allowed my body too to just, just let some of that go. Cause when you're holding on to stuff, you're not letting you, you're not letting yourself heal and you're not able to get past those barriers of things. And, you know, it can hold you back. It really can. Your body is a powerful thing. And, um, when you give it the right stuff, you know, and if I'm telling myself constantly, I'm, this isn't going to happen for me because of those labels that were put on me, is it, is it going to happen? No, because I'm manifesting that it won't wow. because everything that I've been told. So when I started, you know, just, just, just being and being happy and focusing on other things like that whole, even, even my mindset with that changed. And it was, it was more. I just, it was, for, it was very freeing. I don't really know how it, you know, it was like being in a prison for, you know, 21 years. And well, when I, when I, when I, when I let, when that mindset changed, it was probably about 17 years and it, you know, it, it was like a weight that was lifted off. I mean, when you're being weighed down and, you know, you feed yourself those, that negative self-talk, like it can, it can do a lot to you and your body. You know, just like you could trick yourself into thinking you're pregnant because of your mind is a powerful tool and what you feed it and what you, you know, you do with it is it's, it can really impact you. We're, and I find some women, women will embrace their diagnoses and, and mm -hmm. almost, and I don't want to say this because I'm very sensitive to these women and this has been a very sensitive call, but we can actually embrace our diagnosis and embrace our almost become a victim in that and almost celebrate that. Like I am this, this, you know, like, and you don't want to fall into that. You want to, you, it's a tricky thing, but you don't want to fall into that. And we are mind, body, soul. That's the amazing thing about healing. It, it kind of addresses, not kind of, it, it does address all those areas. 
Um, I wanted to share something. So before I can see my third son, so there's almost seven years between my first three boys. So the longest is between the second and third. And I had some intervention with my second. So I spent about two and a half, almost three years, just eating really well, trying to control everything, castor oil packs, all the things you're going to learn about in making babies. That, that, that It's a good book as a foundation because you do want to start living a healthy life. But there is nothing like up leveling it, like, like activation is, is where it's at, right? To really address this root cause. But I'll tell you what happened. My husband is from Germany and I love traveling and I always wanted a huge family. I just wanted a big family. And I remember suddenly switching my mindset like that. And I called my sister-in-law in Germany and I said, we're going to visit for six weeks. I'm going to book a six week visit to Europe. And it, what was going on in my mind is I finally said, fine, forget it. I don't want a big family. I'm fine if I don't have a big family. I have two wonderful boys. And because we don't have more children, we're going to be world travelers. And I'm going to go to Europe for six weeks. And I'm going to do all the things that all the big families can't do because of finances and all those things. I'm going to do that. So I, I booked the trip. When I went on that trip, six months later, I was six months pregnant. Like I literally got pregnant immediately after I was like, you know what? I almost like, okay, God, you win. We, we, I'm going to choose joy. I'm going, this might be my thing. So you kind of accept where you're at and this is my reality. And I choose joy in this moment. And it works that way with relationships too. You know, oftentimes it's when we are in our happiest moment, we, we get comfortable with ourselves that our perfect partner walks into our life. Right. And a lot of that happens in fertility too. So it was just kind of me saying, you know what? I'm going to, all right, if this is how it's going to be, and we have two little boys, three and six-year-old, let's go travel the world. And literally, like, it was from then on, we just never had any issues, you know, getting pregnant. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, endometriosis, all those things Leanne is asking, all of them, it, go to pubmed.gov. Um, I know we this this call is, can only, you know, touch on so much. Unless, Mona, do you want to share something on endometriosis specifically? Um, it was just a diagnosis I got. They they told me that I know there were some things I could do to treat it, but I wasn't willing to do some of those things that they wanted me to do. So I just accepted what they told me. And oftentimes what they'll offer you, like I literally got on a call today and someone was telling me that their brother or brother-in-law, I forget which one, was told, okay, because of his low sperm count, they can actually do an operation, cut it out, take out the mobile sperm, freeze it, and then use it, you know, at a certain point. And you're just like, everything is just so dramatic. And so like, um, it, it's so intense and it's so like, doesn't very have overwhelming. Like, yeah. And it's, and it's so much like, it, it's like sci-fi and it's not how we are, operate as, as human beings and our bodies are just like our brains, neuroplasticity, like they can rejuvenate our cells can rejuvenate there's a book out there called build a new body. Like you don't like your body, go build a new one. Let's go build a new body at the cellular level. Let's go rejuvenate. And guess what? That new body doesn't have said disease because it's, it's rejuvenated. So our bodies have that capability. Um, sperm, you touched on that Mona, uh, with your husband, you know, the, this, this, the men also are affected their fertility because of the environment we live in and activation is, is, is key to that. So I would just recommend go to pubmed.gov. It's the national database for scientific and medical research. And just type in like whatever you've been told, endometriosis, you know, um, infertility, um, PCOS and oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction, you know, look at NAD and all these incredible things. And it's, it's really amazing to see um, how it's all connected at the cellular level. So if you want to be well, the idea is to fix the cell, you fix the cell and then your body does what it needs to do. <laughs> and of course, mindset like Mona touched on. Ladies, do you have any finishing thoughts before we wrap it up? Angie, can I just tell the really funny little thing about the sperm? Can you tell yes. us about the dog? Yes. Is it going to be about the dog? Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, then I want you to, <laughs> I totally forgot that. Yes, please. Okay, so my mom, <laughs> we've had Boston Terrier since I was four, and she's been showing. She had the number one Boston Terrier well, in the country. Uh, he was, <laughs> and everybody wanted to breed to him, and so they put it under the microscope. There were no sperm, so I got pregnant, and, and it was like, well, try to give him this stuff, right? So 
they would crush it up or she'd crush it up, give it to him. And it apparently takes six months for sperm production in dogs. And lo and behold, six months later, boom, he had sperm. And now his grandson is the number one Boston Terrier in the country. <laughs> that's what he's saying. So it works for, and then, but that's the other thing too. So now they, they give it to all the, the moms when they're pregnant, the females when they're pregnant in the breeding program. And, and, and you know, so it's not, this is a product that's good for all men most horses and I've even heard somebody gave it to their hamster and uh <laughs> we so give it to everybody we're like just take it out in your body it's, once you get you once you get into the lifestyle and you start seeing the results you're just so happy like let me share let me share so anyway I just thought that might be a little comic relief that's so powerful I love that story and it, and it, it it just blows me away. We're not as complicated as we think. And I just love this concept of turning the body on to do what it does best. Right. Ladies, so thank you so much for doing I, Exactly. Thank you for joining me on this call. We went over, um, get into the groups. That's all I can say. Uh, reach out to the person who introduced you to these products. Um, I'm telling you there's, there's so much hope in it. Um, be hopeful. And I, and I hope this call was helpful for you guys. God's good for having me. Thank you so much.